What's going on guys, Source Gaming here, and today we have a Photon Hypernova video for you guys. This is our thoughts on Photon Hypernova. Uh, this is the card list that we specifically picked out, thinking that these are the most, uh, these are the best potential cards in the upcoming format. So, uh, with that said, uh, yeah, let's hop right into it. So, uh, for starters, the Gishki cards. So, there's a few Gishki cards that come out in the set. First the one I want to go over is Gishki Grim. So Gishki Grim uh, can pretty much take the whole entire Ritual Summon, a tribute for a Ritual Summon. That's like the first effect. The second effect is, is when this card is normal summoned or special summoned, you can special summon one Gishki monster from your deck. Okay? Which means you could summon Gishki Abyss from your deck. And Gishki Abyss effect is, is it could add a Gishki monster with a thousand or less defense from your deck to your hand. So that allows you to add the older Gishki monsters from your deck to your hand. Uh, which are Vision and and shadow. Uh, and, uh, and shadow, and these cards are able to add you any monster and any ritual spell from your deck to your hand. So uh, that's very very relevant. So I think uh, I think this card might be seeing play, especially in some sort of like sprite variant. Yeah, because the level two is most definitely. And then along with that, we're getting a new ritual monster with the Gishki monsters, and this Gishki monster says. <clears throat> You can target one mon monster special summon it from the graveyard. Broken already, right? If you feed ritual summon for Gishi spell, but obviously we're playing Gishi, that's so that should happen. And then it cannot die by battle if a monster special summon from the extra deck. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can return one Gishi ritual monster you control to their hand. If you do negate the activation, if you do shuffle that card into the deck. So, the most important, the thing I like about this card is. It destroys and shuffles back into the deck where most cards usually just don't do that. It's either just destroy and send it to the graveyard where the destruction effect, not the destruction, but the, the shuffling back effect will come up against two elements. Um, yeah, that's stuff huge. Hand, um, shuffling and deck in general is yeah, huge. Like, just, like that effect is crazy. Can... I agree because like I, I feel like they've been doing that a lot now. It's like a similar effect to crime. It's just huge that this hits all monster effects. And like reborning from grave is obviously going to help you extend on turn one. And I just like the effect that it has uh, not being able to be destroyed by battle by monster, for, especially from the extra deck. It's like an ecclesia. That's just an extra thing that they have to deal with yeah. for no reason. So this card is definitely huge. Just, any card that has three effects on it usually is just very strong. Very so. powerful. Then along with the new spell card they're getting, Aquamir vocalization is basically the rota. And then if you have a ritual monster in play, you can set an aqua mirror spell trap for your deck. On the end phase, so yeah, you just get to be able to set a trap or spell from the end uh, during the end phase, and then during during your turn on the main phase, you can just pretty much, or during like yeah during the main phase, you just add one Gishki monster yeah. from your deck to your hand. So it's just insane. So uh, to go along with like this ritual stuff and the Gishki is this new link monster, Donai mod. Uh, it says if this card is plus some, you can target one monster, no one card on the field, and one ritual monster in your graveyard, shuffle both back into the deck. It's pretty broken, but this is my favorite part about the card. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can tribute this card and target a ritual monster in your graveyard. Either add it to your hand or special summon it. So it's a can be a trap too, essentially, with this new ritual monster being legal. Um, yeah, and just having the bounce effect, just having a interruption during your like, or having a way to to force an interruption on your turn and a way to interact on your opponent during their turn is huge like i love cards like this just being able to help me on my turn and then and then hurt my opponent during their turn so like this card is definitely going to be huge it's going to be played in this deck or in the gishki variants and it's definitely going to be pay, played in like drytron variants or any type of ritual deck moving forward so expect to see this card a lot i definitely think this was a good print by konami so yeah. uh, uh to then go on to the next card uh big welcome labyrinth a uh, new trap for the Labyrinth archetype. It's pretty solid, I would say, because it says special summon Labyrinth monster from your deck, grave, or hand, and return one monster you control. So this works off rip with the Lady Labyrinth. Right? Because she special summons herself from the hand. So she's the perfect target for this trap. Yeah, just an actually. Um, more con consistency for the deck, I should say. Uh, along with this new trap that's coming out, which is called Weight Measuring. You want yeah. to take off with this? Yeah, so this is a card uh, This is a card that's coming out in the new set. And pretty much what it says is, uh, if your opponent controls at least two or more monsters than you do, 
uh, they must send cards they control until they control one. So uh, the cool thing about this is, is if they send like if they have five monsters on the field and they send four monsters from their field to the grave, those monsters can't activate their uh, like their effects if because you're the one sending them. So like oh, unless player. yeah, unless they say like if the card says if this card sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card effect, it's not going to be able to trigger because you're as a player you're choosing to stun the card it's just like evenly matched so uh this card's like insanely strong i think uh i think this card will be heavily played in the labyrinth deck at, le at least maybe like one or two Pat copies for sure. so um and then and on to the next archetype best deals this deck is keep on getting stronger and stronger yep especially because it's paired with the branded cards um off rip, this card is two, like two interruptions in one. Uh, it can become three depending upon what your field is or game state, I should say. Yeah. Uh, because you're just able to banish uh, like a light or, or light or dark, like any other bestial. Yeah. And then its its extra effect is is uh, when your opponent ritual summons, X Y Z summons, fusion summons, link summons, pretty much summons any type of uh, like monster, uh, even ritual. Uh, you could tribute one light or dark monster, then target one of those special summon monsters on the field, and then banish it. So if you tribute like a, a Druid Swarm, you could trigger Druid Swarm's effect to send a card on the field. It, if you uh, if you really even want to like uh, you could send cards like Hofness, uh, like if you used Hofness earlier in the turn, you could send it. But a thing that you guys should know, it does send this cost, so you cannot trigger cards like Hofness uh, when you send them off the card effect. But it being uh, it being a cost is uh, is is like good either way though like i feel like it's uh the card's like just insane so yeah uh bell drake uh, definitely going to be a card that's played in the future now on to oh, the cash tira slash cash tira cash tira slash tira on my cards um what can i say tira on its cash tira is one of the strongest cards in the set just being able to help the cash tier deck and also ha being able to help the tier deck so uh and the tier deck, this card is very, very strong. Just another extender, because during the main phase, quick effect, so your turn and your opponent's, you can banish one cash Tira or Tier Elements card from your hand or graveyard to summon itself. Then it allows you to mill three cards off of your deck or your opponent's, which is huge because this card combos with cards like Kelbeck. You can mill cards of your opponent's deck and then trigger Kelbeck. You can mill cards of your opponent's deck and then trigger Keldo. You could also use this card to mill three cards of your deck, which is huge. Like, that's never going to be an issue for you. Also, this card has a really good effect when it's sent to the graveyard. When it's sent to the graveyard, it gets to mill an additional two cards. So, uh, I think the, the Cash Tier tier element is definitely uh, a card that's going to be played in, in this set. Uh, heavily in the in the cash in the cashier var variant and the tier element variants. Uh, and the in the tier in the cashier variant, it's more of a one of. It's just like an extender, like the scare claw yeah. cash tier. Uh, the scare claw cash tier has an effect where it banishes it one uh, cash tier or one scare claw from your hand or graveyard, like the cash tier tier element. Uh, but uh, the difference is, is this card doesn't have like any real special effects. Yeah, he's just a beater for the deck. Yeah. Uh, just attacks and locks and defense. It has 26 attack essentially. Um. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so I think uh, this card is definitely a card that's probably going to be played at one or two in the pure variants, but not going to be played in any other decks really. So yeah. uh, it's more of just a cash tier card. Uh, next, Rise Heart. Rise Heart is a card that's uh, very strong because it works with cards like Big Bang. You're able to banish cards from uh, like Big, Big Bang, Bang or Papayas. Papayas from your deck to then uh, trigger uh, these guys' special abilities. But uh, this card banishes a card from your deck, and then it banishes the top three cards of your opponent's deck face down, and then its level becomes seven. So uh, that's that's what its uh, normal summon or special summon effect is. And then if you control a cash tier monster, you could also special summon this card from your hand. Uh, but but monster. if you do that, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of your turn except for X Y Z. Yep. So uh, this card is definitely uh, definitely very strong. Uh, just being able to banish cards like Big Bang, which ha have extra abilities. Uh, when this card is banished, uh, you could target one. Uh, you could target one Cash Tira X Y Z monster you control. Add one Cash Tira monster uh, from its material to your hand, and then. Sp
So Big Bang just is able to uh, grab one of the materials, either add it to your hand, uh, and then special summon it, or you could just keep it in your hand. So a lot of the time you could you could take the equipped uh, cash tier tier element, add it to your hand. Either you could keep it in your hand as an interruption on your opponent's turn, or you could then use it to banish cards like Papayas or Big Bang from the graveyard to then get additional effects. So I think that's like very cool. Um, another uh, card that you could banish is uh, Papayas. Uh, Papayas. Uh, when it's banished, it gets to add one of the uh, cash tier or monsters from the banished pile to your hand. It also has an additional effect where uh, it could pretty much special summon any cash tier or monster from your deck that's different attribute than a cash tier or monster you control. So like if you have a friend rear, you can summon a unicorn. If you have a unicorn, you can summon a friend rear. And then usually uh, if you don't get, have those two, you're probably summoning Rise Heart. You're never really summoning like the cash tier or the tier or, or the scare claw off of it. Like it's very rare where or you're summoning those. Or playing like org, I guess. Or I think that's yeah, org, you could add the yeah, trap. Exactly. The trap. So, so this card is definitely very strong. And then another cool thing about Big Bang is uh, it has another uh, effect and uh, it's if uh, if a cashier XRZ monster is on the field, you could pretty much make your opponent banish monsters they control uh, face down until they control one. So it's like evenly matched for monsters uh, when you control a cashier XYZ. So that's very uh, big. It's and then yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah the cards are uh, insane. And I think uh, the the last two cards that I didn't cover for the cashier deck is the field spell that. That pretty much adds any cash tier from your deck to your hand, and then it gives monsters on the field boosts. Uh, and then whenever you use Shangri Law's effect on the field, it could just pretty much target any card in the field and destroy it. So that's very strong. And then the next card I want to talk about in this set, which I think is good, is uh, is the uh, Trivakarma. That's the the new trap uh, right there. Yep. So uh, Trivakarma is a card that could banish itself from the graveyard, then add one uh, speller and trap. That adds Visa or that mentions Visa Starfrost, so you could so add Palerino. All the planets. Yeah, so you could add Palerino or the Scareclaw planet. Uh, the only only field spell it can't add is the Cash Tierra one because that one does not include uh, Visa Starfrost, but uh, the other two you can. So the Scareclaw one and the and the Tier Element one, yeah. you could add those field spells from your deck to your hand. So I think that is definitely a card that might see play. It's just a better version of the Rainbow Bridge card uh, from the Crystal Beast set. Or from the uh, from the Megaton actually, yes. and then on to uh, the new hand trap in the game, Hiding C. Oh my God, Hiding C. This card says when your opponent supposed to summon a monster, except during the damage step, you supposed to summon this card face down. So off rip, it's hard to remove from your side of the field. You have to tribute summon or ritual summon or fusion summon with it, and there's not many targets for those. Yeah, and it's this different. Like a lot of yeah, a lot of time, different. a lot of the time they summon and face up attack. So like, this is the first time where one gets summoned face down defense position. So like, I think, I think this is definitely makes it a lot harder because in the past, the old flying C cards or flying C contact C, those yeah. cards used to have issues where they would just get linked off. So they're trying to like counteract that by yeah. making it to where this card gets some uh, summoned face down. And then what does the effect do on the end phase, Kamal? Oh my lord, this card says during the end phase when it's no, it flips itself. It changes the position to face up, the defense position during the end phase, and then if this card is flipped face up during the end phase, destroy all spells and summon monsters on the field. So it's kind of like a, the new Nibiru in a sense. Or uh, yeah, because yeah. at the end of their combo, if they special summon a monster, you could then summon this card to their field, and then during the end phase, like it just nukes the whole field. They have nothing. They have nothing to stop that unless they could tribute summon over this guy. Ritual. Like I don't even know. Like I feel like this card could definitely be a potential issue for a lot of decks. Like right now, I know there's a lot of tier running around, and sometimes like uh, like it could trigger their floaters. But like in certain matchups or in the future, this card could definitely be a card that's just played in everyone's deck. So like I think this card is definitely a card that we wanted to bring to y'all's attention. 100%. And then along with that, the pretty obvious card. Triple Tactical Taxing, way better than Triple Tactical Talents off one text alone. If your opponent activates a monster effect this turn. In general. In general. So, you can search for any card in your deck. So, Terraforming, Evenly Match, Mind Control, Change of Heart, Triple Tactical Talents if you wanted to, uh, Terraforming to get any field spell in the game. Uh, this is one of the most powerful cards I've read yet. 
Yeah. Uh, you could out count. You could out. You could add countless cards. Like I feel like there's so many targets for this card that you could add that we might even make an additional video talking about this card and the potential cards that it could add. So, if you guys are interested in that, just let us know in the description below, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely uh, release a video on it. All right. Um, next, we talked about the weight range ring, of course. So on to the extra deck. Uh, Rise heart. We Walking Macros Cosmos, detach three XYZ materials from it to then banish a card on the field face down. And then each time a card is banished, it can equip a banished card to itself as material. So this and card is no brainer. Effect too, in a sense. You can go XYZ summon over Cash Over Shinger monster. Law. Exactly. Yeah. If you use Shinger Law, you could summon over any Cash Tier monster. So like that that's huge. Even if your opponent uses Shinger Law, you could summon over any Cash Tier monster. Yeah. So I hope I hope everyone's aware of that. Like that's like that's a, definitely like one of the best things about this effect. It's like so if your opponent uses the effect of Shinger Law to summon on the standby phase and you summon a Cash Tier monster, you could yeah, summon a Rise Heart right, right over it anytime. So this is definitely something huge and I think this card is definitely going to be played in like almost every deck. So like this card is definitely a card to keep an eye out for. So uh, on to the next card, a Fusion Grand Good and all, the final, final dragon. dragon. Blazing Cartesia fusion target. First one yet, and probably not going to be our last. Yeah, definitely a lot more coming uh, our way. But the cool thing about this one is specifically it takes one light or dark monster. And the cool thing is in the branded deck, it had no real, like... Fusion monster for Blazing Cortesia. So like a lot of the time you are forced to fuse with other monsters you control, except yeah. with the Blazing Cortesia. But now you could actually fuse with the Blazing Cortesia to summon a card like this, which then allows you to send one level six or higher light monster from your deck or extra deck from your gra uh, to the graveyard. So what's some potential cards you could send off of this, Kamal? Um, we can go with Lubelion for the br the Bestial stuff, of course, or we can go to like the Shadal route with Apicolon, so we can summon Wind on your opponent's turn. With schism, um, with, yeah, so. All schism. Um, then there's another few target, a few targets. I like uh, like Albion Dragon to sat during the end phase. Yes. Like there's definitely a few targets. Uh, like the one that adds uh, Tri Mercury on this phase. So, like there's like a lot of cool things you could send off this. So I think this card's definitely gonna be played. Uh, in 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 some numbers. So uh. And you can also tag out for a Despia monster. So I yeah. Remember which the tag out effect is very good. Uh. Uh, let's let's get to that tag out effect because it could summon, I believe, any Despia from the, like this this one and uh, Coratus. So uh, its tag out effect uh, pretty much says it could special summon one, one Despia from or the extra. One, yeah, one Despia from the extra deck or one Dot Manica from your main deck. So you could summon Ecclesia or uh or Flare, probably Ecclesia realistically, yeah. right? Or hold even on. Maximus. Actually, hold on. Let me make sure I'm spelling this correct, but. Anyways, they get a new card, I believe. They, I don't... they get a new ritual. I know that you're getting the new ritual. Yeah, that's their new ritual right yeah, there, I right believe. Here. Yeah. I don't know if this is a legal target. I don't think so. It wouldn't matter. It's just doing your main face. Yeah. I think there's a lot of potential options for this card to, to summon from from the deck. Like, like being able to summon Ecclesia is huge, but being able to summon Maximus sounds crazy as well. Just being able to send two cards from the extra deck, but like, in this format, like I don't know how relevant this, uh, like how relevant it would be to play the Dogmatica cards. I feel like this is more of a, a more of a Despia card yeah, in a I think sense. Yeah, totally targeted for the Despia. Yeah, it's like realistically, like this is probably gonna just be summoning Quiratus a uh, majority of the time with the additional effect, but the first effect is probably gonna help you set up with like App Clone, etc. So, uh, I think this card is very good. Like I said, just having a target for Blazing Cortesia because we didn't have one in general. So I, I think that's good. And then uh, uh, our final card, Chaos Beast. Yeah. This card right here, I, I think it's pretty solid out of the new Chaos cards that are coming out in the new set. Um, it basically repl replaces itself when you make it. Also, it becomes a 3,000 stick, so it could be an issue on the turn to get summoned. Also, it's a floater, so it's like. It's it's yeah it's a it's a fine I feel like it's a fine level six. It's the first like level six synchro that just has 3k attack. Um, also has like the additional effect to add back from the banish your hand that could just like become relevant and then like it also has like a recurring effect on the next turn to like that could banish light and dark to summon itself like chaotic ruler did so yeah. I mean uh, I love the chaos cards uh, I felt like this one was one that we should have mentioned but overall we just wanted to talk about the set and talk about like what we thought were the best cards in the set so let us know what you guys think of the set let us know if we missed anything on our end what, what you guys uh, think of the set in general so uh, yeah just just let us know